What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money. This topic is a topic that's very, very close to me. I don't talk about it too much on this channel, but uh, recently I had someone come on this channel and ask me how to be financially disciplined. And this is actually one of my favorite topics ever. And so big shout out to you. Thank you. And you know, guys, sometimes I just need somebody to come up here and ask me a question because like sometimes I'm thinking about stuff, but I'm not really thinking about what you're wanting to ask me. So like I just come up with my ideas by myself, but it's even more helpful when y'all come up here and ask questions like, hey, can you make a video about this? Like if, if I can, I can. If I can't, I'll have to learn more before I do it. You get what I'm saying? But I'm not really going to turn down a request for a specific video that you're asking for. So I really appreciate you. Shout out to you for asking that question. It's going to get me into my zone in this video. Y'all know I like to get fired up sometimes. This is one of those days right here. The first thing you have to do with anything that requires any amount of discipline is you have to get clear on what you want to do. You have to really ask yourself and look within yourself and say this, do I really want what I say I want or am I just saying it because it sounds good? Because make no mistake, when it comes to discipline, it has nothing to do necessarily with personal finances. Like it doesn't matter if you're talking about your finances, it doesn't matter if you're talking about your health, your relationships, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to have the same mindset when you go into anything. So the first step is getting clear on what you actually want. If you really want to get out of debt, get clear on it, but get clear on the specifics of it too. You can't just say stuff like, I wanna be debt free, I want to have an emergency fund, but have zero quantification behind it. You get what I'm saying? If you want to be debt free, okay, by when? And based on this timeline, how much work do you have to put in? How much payments do you have to put in to get that down by that date? Are you going to have to do anything in between there? So basically what I'm saying is getting clear on what you want is going to pretty much give you the steps that you already know you need to take. And the best thing with getting clear on what you want is really not thinking about it as personal finances at all because the best way you get discipline is truly wanting something. And I'll give you a few examples. So back in the day, I wanted to buy a PSP, a PlayStation Portable. I'm pretty sure that was back in 2005, but I wanted one. I told my parents I wanted one. They were like, great, you're gonna buy it yourself. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't have the money for it. They're like, exactly, so you have to work for it. And I had to figure out how I was gonna pay for it. So I was cutting people's grass. So you get what I'm saying? If I wasn't disciplined, I'd be like, well, I guess I really don't want it that bad, I mean, you're not gonna pay for it. But no, I was like, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this. And I just had that go-getter in me. Like, I was like, I'm gonna get that PlayStation Portable. So I cut grass and it took hours and it took days and it took weeks. But eventually I earned enough money to go then buy that PSP. So as I was earning the money, I was saving the money. I didn't give in to, oh, there's a $20 action figure over there. There's a, you know, $30 game I could get for my PlayStation 2. Like, nah, I was like, I'm gonna save this money up. No matter how much it's burning the hole in my pocket, no matter how tempting it is, I'm going to save it until I'm able to get the PSP. And that's what I did. But other examples are stuff like, I've been in stuff like Drumline and Taekwondo, like just throughout my childhood. And so when you're in those types of sports, like it's very discipline related. Like when you're in the drum line, you're carrying these heavy drums on your shoulders and you're marching with them. And you have to stay in rhythm and you have to stay on step and all that stuff. You have to stay on beat. You can't be messing up. And sometimes you want to take those heavy behind drums off you and be like, all right, I'm done for the day. But we're talking hours and we're talking practice before practice and practice after practice because that's just how drum line is. That's laps, you know what I'm saying, around the football field because you got to stay in shape. And I had to really think about what is the goal. My goal was I wanted to be a really good drummer. I wanted to be on the drum line. If you're going to be on the drum line, you have to have that discipline. When I was in Taekwondo, I wanted to be a good fighter. You know what I'm saying? So when you become a good fighter, you have to have that endurance. You have to have that strength. You have to have the tact as well. You have to have good strategy. And you can't just be like, oh, I'm winded, so I'm going to stop. Like, nah, we're sparring right now. Me and you were sparring. Ain't no stopping. The only thing that's going to stop you is saved by the bell. And so you really have to ask yourself, 
do I really want it? And I ask myself that plenty of times in my life and the answer is always 100% yes. And so it's no different when it comes to your personal finances. You want to get out of debt? How bad do you want to get out of debt? You want to build an emergency fund? How bad do you want to build that emergency fund? And really think about the reason why you want to build these things in the first place. Is it because somebody told you you should? Is it like on your accord or someone else's accord? Because if it's on someone else's accord, even though they might be right that you should get these things done and checked off the list, you're not gonna 100% be invested in it if it's not 100% coming from you, if it's not something that you genuinely want to do with a reason why you wanna do it. It doesn't have to be the deepest reason in the world, you just have to have a reason why. And here's a good reason to have an emergency fund, by the way, if you're wanting to build one. How about the fact that we're in a recession? How about the fact that a job will lay you off at a moment's notice and not give two craps about if you can afford your lifestyle without them? How about the fact that you have people who are relying on you to win? And even if you don't have people relying on you, you're relying on yourself. You get what I'm saying? And so those are all good reasons to have an emergency fund. Why would you want to get out of debt? Because maybe your credit score is eating you alive. Why do you want to get out of debt? Maybe because you don't want to negatively affect your credit score. Perhaps you know that it'll increase your net worth once you do get out of debt and you that'll be one weight on your shoulders that you don't have to worry about anymore. Maybe one day you want to buy a house, you want to buy property, and you don't want to have a bad credit score. Maybe you realize that you went too long without putting so much as a dent into your debt and you're like, you know what, I'm going to get on top of this. Those are reasons why you would want those things, but what is your reason though? That's what I'm saying. You have to get clear on exactly what it is that you want and you have to be crystal clear that it is in fact what you want to do and it's not just something that you're saying because how many people have you heard say yeah I'm, I'm about to lose this weight you know what i'm saying or i want to lose weight so i can be healthy okay but what is the reason why and by when and how much are you going to lose i'm going to lose 20 pounds within the next 11 months because right now i don't feel my best Right now, I don't look my best, and I know I could be doing better, and I know I can 100% lose this 20 pounds in this time. That sounds a lot stronger than saying, I'm going to lose this weight just, just because I want to be healthy. Like, nah, that ain't, ain't going to cut it around here. So you have to think the same way with your money. And once you outline why you're doing what you're doing, and you outline what you're crystal clear that you absolutely want to do, now it's time to actually start putting that into action. But before you do that, you have to understand what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do to get there. And this is very important because it's going to help you establish boundaries for yourself early on. And so what I mean is if you're saving up for an emergency fund, maybe something that you will do is work a little bit of overtime at work to help that money come in faster so you can save it faster. But maybe something that you will not do is compromise on your lifestyle. So maybe something you will not do is chop your phone bill in half by going to a cheaper carrier. Maybe you're gonna keep the same phone bill, but you're gonna just keep doing that overtime that you're working. That's an example of what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do. And if you're doing something like trying to completely pay off debt, you might say, you know what? I will put $50 extra towards my debt than I normally would have. But something I'm not willing to do is get so overzealous about paying off my debt that I put so much more money into my debt than I normally would have that I'm living off of pennies at the end of the month. You get what I'm saying? Like there's definitely boundaries that you have to decide to set in place. Like I'm willing to set up a budget, but I'm not willing to go beyond that budget. Like I'm gonna make it to where this budget right here is the law. And within this budget, I'm gonna create my own parameters that I don't go outside of. Because I know if I do, everything that I want fails. And that's why you have to definitely make sure you're crystal clear on what you want. Everybody says they want to have a good body. Everyone says they wanna be healthy. Everybody wants to be financially stable. Everybody wants to be mentally stable and everybody wants to have healthy relationships. Everyone wants to be good spiritually, but how often do we do what we say that we're going to do? You really have to assess yourself and look within like, what am I eating? What type of exercises am I doing? What kind of money practices am I doing? Am I actually disciplined in any of these ways? Because I'm saying I want it, but do I actually want it? And the way you can answer that question is, are you actually taking the steps to get to where you want to get? 
if you have money goals, like if you want to invest your first $5,000 by the end of this year, if you want to save your first $20,000 by the end of this year, if you want to get out of $10,000 in debt by the end of this year, just ask yourself, am I just talking or am I actually doing it? And I had to ask myself that question several times in my life, even with money, believe it or not especially when I first got out of college. But that's because I had so many financial goals that I wanted to reach. I wanted to become a millionaire and I was obsessed with accumulating more money. But at the same time, I wanted to build my savings and get out of debt completely, like all on one go. Like that's not how you do it. You focus on one thing at a time. And I really had to ask myself, am I actually doing anything about this? Like, yeah, I was reading articles and I was watching YouTube videos, but was I actually taking the steps? to do what I was saying that I wanted to do. Because if I really was, I would have merely just did this. At the beginning of every month, I would take the amount of money that I wanted to save at the very beginning of every month, and then I would spend what was left on necessities and things of that nature. But instead, what I did was the exact opposite. I spent my paychecks on necessities, then I spent my paycheck on things that I wanted, and then at the very end of it, I was like, okay, then I'll, I'll save this little bit. And I saved a lot less than what I could have. I still saved a lot now, but I saved a lot less than what I could have. And that's what I'm talking about. Like I want, my goal was to save as much as possible. So part of me was just talking. And so you really just want to ask yourself, am I taking the right steps? Not just any steps. Cause you know what I'm saying? If you say you want to do something and you take steps with the wrong steps, that's really not that's really a waste of time and energy if you ask me like if it's your goal to bench like if it's your goal to bench press 225 pounds and then your way of doing it and your steps of doing this is going outside and running 10 laps around the basketball court that ain't gonna get you there if your goal is to squat 315 pounds and you do 15 push-ups a day that's not going to get you there that's taking the wrong steps you get what i'm saying so it's not just about saying what you want and then taking steps. It's about saying exactly what you want and knowing that that's what you want and then doing the right steps, not just any steps, the right steps that get you there. And sometimes you might have to do a little bit of research. Like you're watching this video right now. That's, this is an example of doing the research to get to the goal that you wanna to get to and just learning stuff that maybe you either didn't know or just reinstating things that you did know. And what I'm saying in this video is very simple. But that's genuinely what builds the discipline that I'm talking about is having a strong desire to actually reach a certain goal and really understanding yourself and what you want to set for yourself and what future you see yourself living in. And this actually gets deeper than personal finance. Like if you're a type of person that hates your job right now, like you literally loathe the idea that you have to wake up and then get up and go drive to your job. And then you get to a point where you start to fantasize about leaving. And you start to envision yourself in a different situation, in a different world basically, where you work at a job that you actually really like, that pays you fairly, and that actually treats you right. And that's something that I've done before. And it was like an everyday thing. But you know what? I had to go from, instead of just intensely feeling that way, to actually doing something about it. And the first step was improving myself to get to a point where I could actually interview competitively for other jobs. And then the next step was actually putting my application out there and getting my resume to a point where it was really, really good, and then submitting it to other places. And then you know what? Next thing I knew, I ended up in the exact reality that I envisioned myself in. So it's no different with any goal that you have. So if you have a goal, any financial goal at all, if you wanna save your first $1,000, if you wanna make your first $10,000 in one month, if you just don't wanna be struggling anymore with money, if you don't wanna be living paycheck to paycheck, these are the steps you have to start off with and these are by far the most important because there is no third step, which you could argue is most important, but there is no third step without the first two. And if you're wondering what the third step is, you have to create a plan. There's two specific types of plans that I want you to make if we're talking about being disciplined financially because they're absolutely crucial for whatever it is that you want to do. And you'll either find yourself using one or both of them. The first one is just taking a sheet of paper out. It, you could have pen to paper or you could be on Microsoft Word. It really don't matter to me. I did mine on Google Docs and I do this every single year. And sometimes I do it multiple times a year just depending on what I'm wanting to do with my finances. But it doesn't just have to be finances. It could be any goal you have in life. 
any aspiration you have in life, but I think it needs to be written on paper. And so it's as simple as saying by December 31st, 2022, save my first $5,500. And then up under it, I typically put something like where I'm at right now. So you might be at 2000 right now. So now the question is, how do I get to 5,500 by the end of the year? How do I come up with 3,500 more dollars by the end of the year? And it might be super simple. Yeah, just simple math. It's simple math, so there's five more months in the year. I, that means I have to save $700 a month for the rest of the year and I'll get to my goal. But then the question might be, well, wait a minute. I'm not able to save $700 per month. I'm only able to save $500 per month. So now where do I get that extra $200? You get what I'm saying? And so you're already formulating and pre-planning something to do to about that situation to combat it. So even if you write all that stuff down and then you walk away, you go to the gym or something, you come right back. As you're moving on throughout your day, I don't care if you're driving to work, if you just ate dinner, if you just go went out to hang out with a friend, if you just went to the gym, as you're moving on through your everyday life, things are because you wrote it down and because you thought about it initially, you're already going to be starting to think about how can I do that? Next thing you know, opportunities are going to start popping up in front of you like, oh, my job is offering overtime for the next couple of months. Let me take advantage of that. Whereas if they would have done that without you pre-planning that stuff, you'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm chilling this week and I, I still got time to save, you know what I'm saying, my $5,500. But because you already did the math and understood that you can't do it based off of your original plan, What's plan B? Super, super important. And it requires discipline to do this because I'm telling you right now, I don't be wanting to do overtime. I don't get overtime, but you get what I'm saying. Like if I was an hourly employee who had the opportunity to get overtime, I'm wanting to chill on the weekend. You get what I'm saying? So it's not like a normal thing that people want to do unless they have a specific goal in life. And you can say to yourself, you know, if I sacrifice a couple of months and work as much overtime as possible and I work six days a week for X amount of time, I can come up with this money way before the end of the year. And then I could save even more than that. You have the control over your financial situation at that point in time. You get what I'm saying? So that's what I'm talking about. And it could be something like, I wanna invest in 50 shares of Apple by the end of this year. Right now I'm at five. Okay, how do I get 45 more shares? And you could be steaming over this the whole year and no one good and well, you're not gonna be able to do it with your basic plan of buying one or two shares per month because you need, you know what I'm saying, 45 more shares. But then if you look at the stock market and it just crashes and then all of a sudden Apple's on a big discount and no longer is it like 130 something dollars. Nah, right now it's, 90 something dollars okay now i can actually get more for my money so even if you don't hit the 50 shares you're probably going to get more shares than you would have if you didn't notice that oh the stock market crash you get what i'm saying like as you write these things down things are going to pop up in front of you that are like little signs like hey you're going to reach your goal by doing this if you want to build an emergency fund or get out of debt basically anything i'm saying in this video requires you to have discipline to save money and so when you do that you're like you know what what was that reggie talking about on his video he says something about setting aside the money early at the beginning of the month but he also says something about automation so if i automate 500 dollars at the beginning of the month to go into my savings account I can then decide where it goes from there. I can decide if it goes towards my debt. I can decide if it just stays in saving. I can decide if it goes toward my investments. I get to decide. And so I'm taking discipline out of the equation somewhat because I'm automating my bank account to do the thinking for me at the beginning of the month. That way I don't have to mentally say, oh, I'm gonna save $500. Because whenever we do that, we don't typically want to save the 500 or however many dollars because it's like, well, I can buy this, I can buy that. No, 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 no. Forget about those Jordans, you know what I'm saying? Forget about those Ray-Bans, forget about the watches. Forget about looking fresh for a second. Forget about that video game. Forget about going to that concert you wanted to go to and think about your future. And once you're crystal clear on your goal, you'll be able to build up a tolerance for saying no. No, I'm not gonna go out to eat. No, I'm not gonna go to that concert. No, I'm not gonna go to that comedy show. No, I'm not gonna go to the beach. No, I'm not gonna go to the amusement park. Because at this point in life, I'm building. I'm building my financial discipline. I'm building my financial empire. And I can't do that the way I want to do it, at the speed I want to do it, if I keep saying yes to everything and spending all my money and all my time and all my energy having fun all the time or doing what other people want me to do. I got to look out for myself and my future self and my future family. That's important and that's very, 
very powerful. And that's what you have to think about. Like for me, discipline is easy because I know what I want. And I know what I'm going to be able to do in the future. And it's not to say that you never, ever have fun. It's not to say that you never, ever say yes to anything. It's saying that you have boundaries and you know when to say yes and when to say no. And maybe more, more times than not, it's going to be a no. But at least you have that boundary and you know what you want and you know how you're going to get there. And you have a plan and you're following that plan and you're taking the steps, the right steps to get to where you want to be. That's how you become financially disciplined. If you're confused about something and you don't quite know what steps to take, that's okay. I don't know what steps to take right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm going to get me a book. I'm going to listen to a podcast. I'm going to watch a YouTube video. I'm going to watch somebody who knows more than me, somebody who is smarter than me within this specific niche. And I'm going to learn exactly what I need to do and become more knowledgeable and then I'm going to get to where I want to be. Like I said, if you're struggling with anything, if you're struggling saving money, if you're struggling with debt or whatever, and you're not doing something to learn about how to get out of that situation, are you really serious about getting out of that situation or are you just talking? That's really what it's going to boil down to. Is this what I really want or am I just talking? And shameless plug, amen. Uh, I have a book coming out, which you saw the cover for at the very beginning of this video. Very, very, very dope cover but it's going to go over a lot of the stuff i'm talking about in this video about the financial discipline about the struggles that i've had in life and mistakes that i've made and money mistakes to just avoid in general but also how to assess the cost of living how to not live paycheck to paycheck how to interview for jobs super super good stuff that's going to actually help you become more financially disciplined and stay in a situation where you're good financially and you're not sitting around struggling or worrying about your financial situations where you can actually go to sleep at night and feel like you know what i'm good i got it going on and it's based off of past experiences based off of trial and error and it's based off of all of the harsh lessons i've had to learn over the years coming august 14th and the second thing that i almost forgot to mention for some reason is when you create this plan next to it should be a budget that outlines exactly how this plan will manifest. Because even though it's great to think about something all day in the back of your mind and you're just like, okay, I think I have a plan. But like at the very end of the day, if you have a budget that outlines how you're gonna better save your money, is what it's gonna do is gonna double your chances of being financially successful at what you want to achieve. Just like the young version of me, I think I was like, eight or nine years old, the young version of me was like, I want that PSP. So my budget right then was that PSP and only that PSP. I ain't have no bills. You know what I'm saying? I was, hey, I didn't have no bills. I didn't, I wasn't, I was financially responsible for nothing. So you know what I did? I set up a budget specifically for the PSP, put that bad boy on layaway and I earned the money. And then as soon as I had just enough money for the PSP, I bought the PSP. Now, low key, your boy didn't have a game to go with the PSP, but, you know, I had the tenacity, nonetheless, to get the PSP. And so that's what I want you to do. Except I want you to think further beyond just the thing that you want, but think beyond that and have money beyond what your goal is. So that way you're not sitting around with the theoretical PSP without a game. And that's the game on being financially discipline no pun intended anyway that's the video for today thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video stay cold